Hey, what is up everyone? It's the one and only and there are so many questions pertaining to the new lineup of MacBooks. You see, Apple kind of simplified the lineup, but in a way also raised more questions than answers. Why was a 12 inch MacBook killed off? Which MacBook is better for school? Which one is the most powerful? All of those questions and more will be answered in this video. So if you're one of the countless people who are looking into either upgrading or even buying your first ever MacBook, then you've come to the right place. So sit tight, relax, and get ready for this summer 2019 MacBook buying guide. Let's go. Alright guys, I know buying a MacBook is one of the best feelings in the world, but when you're paying a thousand dollars minimum for one of these, it is of the utmost importance that you make sure you pick up the one that is right for you. I have seen it way too many times. I've seen people pick up the 15 inch MacBook Pros all for the user to just browse Facebook all day and maybe occasionally type up the occasional Word document. See, this is a prime example of wasting your money. So I am here to try to get you as informed as possible going over weight, specs, price, size, features, everything you need to know. I always try to make my subscribers be as informed as possible so that they can be more confident and happier with their purchase. If this is your first time here, Welcome and I hope you find this video useful. Consider subscribing to my channel with bell notifications so you never miss one of my videos. And for my beloved subscribers who have been here from the start, I love you all. Thanks for coming back. All right, let's dive straight in. So I know, I know, Apple only sells three models. It used to be five, technically. That is the MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and also the 15-inch MacBook Pro, making the Air the most affordable MacBook you can buy. Apple quietly discontinued two other models, that being the older style, super outdated MacBook Air with the non-retina display, and also the 12 inch MacBook. For this video, I'm going to be including the 12 inch MacBook up in the mix just because despite having somewhat mediocre specs, I feel it can still fit a role in a very particular person's needs. While Apple doesn't sell the 12 inch anymore, Amazon does as I'm sure as other places like Best Buy does as well until they exhaust their supply. So let's begin with that. So the 12 inch was discontinued this month, July 2019, and it didn't really come as a surprise to many. After the Air was redesigned to its ultra thin and beautiful new chassis, the 12 inch MacBook kind of lost its luster. Before the Air redesign, the 12 inch was this engineering marvel. This super sleek, super sexy, super portable machine that you could take just about anywhere. However, the MacBook Air was slowly starting to overtake that role with better specs and a better price tag at that. Really, the only advantage a 12 inch had at the time was it came with a 256 gigabyte hard drive, while the Air embarrassingly still comes with 128 gigabytes in 2019. But I must say this, the portability of the 12 inch is unmatched. That one inch difference in screen size versus the air makes a drastic difference when you're looking at ultra portability. I once took my 12 inch on a plane ride and was typing up a script so comfortably. If I would have taken my gargantuan 15 inch pro, forget about it. But the 12 inch was the perfect mini size that I could whip out just about anywhere and get to work. And since I was only scripting on word, processor speeds were of the least importance for me. What I'm basically trying to say is I love its portability, but hate its specs. I'd say only pick this up if you can find it for a bargain less than a thousand dollars less than nine hundred dollars even to be an even better purchase but only pick it up if you know for a fact you just need it for light web browsing and basically nothing else as that severely outdated processor won't get you far at all and will have you grow gray hairs before you have it complete the task you wanted so now getting to apple's official current lineup of mac laptops we start with the newly refreshed macbook air that sees a new fourth generation butterfly keyboard which should be more reliable, a new true tone display, and shockingly, a lower price tag. Finally, Apple is headed in the right direction and gave us more for less. I'm honestly surprised, but finally the consumer wins. So who is the MacBook Air for? 
Well, for one, it is the cheapest offering Apple currently has for brand new laptops. It comes in at $1,099 or $999 if you're a college student, and you get an ultra thin and portable 13 inch computer that is able to handle the majority of everyday non processor heavy tasks like web browsing or creating and sharing Word documents or even PowerPoint presentations. Where it lacks, obviously, is in the processor department. There's not much configuration you can do here. It comes with a base 1.6 gigahertz dual core, eighth generation i5 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM standard, which can be configured up to 16 gigabytes, and a measly 128 gigabytes of storage, which is less than ideal if you were hoping to video edit or make 3D rendering models or even produce music on your air. This does mean that this is the laptop to get if you're a college student or need the best portability imaginable at the current lineup. I created a chart with the size and weight of each of the MacBook models and as you can see it definitely is the lightest of the current lineup coming in at 2.75 pounds or 1.25 kilograms but has essentially the same dimensions as the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the notable exception of it being thinner at its thinnest point since it does have a wedge shaped design to it. Up next would I like to consider the best MacBook for multitasking that being the 13 inch MacBook Pro. The 13 inch shook up the entire MacBook lineup with the new entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro arguably being a better purchase versus the entry level Air. I'm actually going to be making a video just on that topic because I feel Apple now made it an even harder decision to choose between their entry level offerings. Anyway, the 13 inch Pro entry level comes standard with a much better 1.4 gigahertz quad core 8th gen i5 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, better graphics sporting the Intel Iris Plus graphics 645 and the same 128 gigabytes of storage which is insane on a device carrying the Pro moniker. This base configuration comes in at $1,299 but you can opt to get the more expensive $1,799 version which comes equipped with a 2.4 gigahertz base quad core 8th generation i5 eight gigabytes of RAM and an improved Intel Iris Plus 655, but most importantly, a better 256 gigabyte SSD. Not the best, but definitely better. I do think hands down, the entry level 1299 1.4 gigahertz 13 inch will be the most popular and honestly the best bang for your buck. In terms of features though, only the higher configured $1799 version will come with four Thunderbolt 3 ports while the Air and entry level 13 only come with two Thunderbolt 3 ports and also now all MacBook Pros, whether they be the 13 inch or 15 inch all come standard with the touch bar and touch ID. Even though the Air doesn't have the touch bar, it still sports the touch ID sensor which I think is real handy. Whether you love it or hate it, the touch bar is now here to stay apparently. Out of all the current MacBooks, I love the footprint of the 13 inch the most. It's small and compact and is the perfect medium between portability and power. The 15 inch hands down is the best for the most power hungry users, but honestly, I would say consider busting out the additional $200 or so and get the entry level pro versus the air. You'll get a much faster quad core chip, which will enable you to more easily handle multi core tasks that tap into the power of that processor and is still portable enough for you to take it anywhere you'd like. But if you need the most power imaginable, the 15 inch is your guy. It doesn't matter if you edit a ton of raw photos, edit and export videos in 4K, or use your MacBook to code and create new and intuitive applications. The 15 inch Pro has your back for just about anything. Coming in at a hefty entry level price of $2,399 though, you need to highly consider if your workload is enough to justify such a pricey piece of tech. The entry level model comes with a 2.6 gigahertz, six core, ninth generation i7 processor, with a Radeon Pro 555X graphics card and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM with 256 gigs of storage. But it also comes in a 2.3 gigahertz eight core variant with a 560X graphics card and a 512 gigabyte SSD for a whopping $2,799. Let me also mention you can fully spec this out to a 2.4 GHz 8 core 9th generation i9, 32 GB of RAM, 
a Radeon Pro Vega 20 graphics card, and up to a massive 4 terabytes of storage, which Apple thankfully dropped the price of SSD upgrades across the board. Needless to say, the 15-inch Pro is a powerhouse for those with the most demanding workflows. It also sports the sharpest looking display having a resolution of 2800 by 1800 pixels and of course also offers True Tone, the Touch Bar, and Touch ID. The only downside to this is as the ultimate pro computer by Apple, photographers and other creative professionals might be disappointed at the selection of I.O. ports having only 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports and nothing else. The absence of an SD card slot is a huge bummer and you'll likely have to buy several dongles to be able to work the most efficiently with your workflow. All in all though, I depend on my MacBook Pro a lot for most of my video editing needs and it gets the job just as snappy as my iMac and best of all, of course if you haven't figured it out by now, it's portable. So it's almost like carrying around the same power as my iMac around with me. Again, this MacBook is definitely for those professionals who really need the most power out of a computer and I would strongly advise those who will not use this for video editing or photography to skip out on this and save a ton of cash and opt for the 13 inch instead. Choosing the right MacBook isn't easy, especially when you'll be likely depending on your MacBook for several years, I'm talking maybe 4 years plus, before you even consider upgrading. I have had time with all of these devices and I feel my experience is adequate enough to make the following recommendations. For portability, you got to go with a 12 inch MacBook if you can find it at a stellar price. If you can find a semi new one on eBay, even better. However, keep in mind you'll be getting mediocre specs, but if that doesn't matter to you and you're just concerned with portability and a computer best suited for traveling, the 12 inch MacBook is for you. Just don't pay full price for it. The best MacBook for most people, and especially for students, hands down, has to go to the MacBook Air. Its versatility of being light and portable, but also with an exceptional battery life, gets you through the entire day accomplishing basic tasks while also being Apple's most affordable option to dive into their Mac ecosystem with a starting price of $999 for students. The best value though hands down has to go to the newly refreshed entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's just so versatile being slightly more expensive than the Air but also adding more power under the hood for those that may need more power later in the future without having to compromise too much cash. Just remember that this MacBook Pro 13 inch entry level model does only come with two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Only the more expensive 1799 model has the four Thunderbolt 3 ports which makes it perfect for those demanding higher workflows and need more multitasking abilities. The Mac Daddy of them all, the 15 inch Pro demands such a high premium though, which is its biggest obvious drawback. With a starting price of $2,399, ask yourself, do I really need this? If you're even debating with yourself whether you need it or not, then it's not for you. However, if you're certain you'll be video editing, coding, or even producing music right on your MacBook, then you won't be disappointed. I love my 15 inch Pro and I would say I spend the most time with it. As with all MacBooks, battery life is phenomenal and all. I even made my own test on the MacBooks where I performed a plethora of unique and real world tasks to see which device would last longer definitely check that video out if you haven't already. I really hope you found this buying guide helpful and I hope I helped you make the right choice on which device to buy. As I mentioned earlier, if you found this video useful, consider sharing it with your buddies who may also be having some trouble in deciding which MacBook to buy. Make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'm not done with the new MacBook lineup. We're going to go in depth with the new Air and Entry Level Pro, so ring that bell notification so that you don't miss it. That's it for this video, but I can't wait to catch everyone in the next one. Peace. Thank you.